Well, good morning, Sparrow Day. My name is Liz Perez, and I'm so excited to bring this message this morning. It's really a conversation that we're going to have about emotional safety. At Sparrow Day, one of the things that is so valuable to us is that we create a safe place where you can show up truly as who you are. Our tagline under our our name, Sparrow Day, says where your story finds a home. And that has great meaning for us. There are lots of churches that I've been part of that are friendly and say that all are welcome. And yet there are still some nuances that I have discovered when I am part of these uh, communities where it's like, yes, all are welcome to come in, but we really want to tweak and fix and, and shape you in a particular way. And here at Sparrow Day, love is the highest for us. It is the highest value we have. And so we create environments, whether it's in our city groups, whether it's groups we lead, book clubs, classes, where you show up and you don't have to be all spiffed up and cleaned up, or you don't walk into a group and go, oh, okay, I get it. There's a right answer here, or I have to say the right thing, or I am going to be fixed or given advice without asking permission. But here we're all about creating a place that is emotionally safe. We believe it is healing. We believe you actually experience God's love, God's mercy, and God's compassion in these kind of environments. So I'm excited to have this conversation with three people. It's going to be India Lacerda, who is our Director of Children's Ministry, uh, Sparrow Day Kids, with Mallory Polk, who directs our little bitties, Sparrow, our little sparrows, and then also with Micah White, who is a Sparrow Day member and has been part of helping us uh, plant Sparrow Day. So join us in this conversation. Into me see, into me know, into me be part of my soul. Gate is unlocked. Keys in your hand Into me see All that I am Into my dreams Inside my fear into my scars Inside my tears Gate is unlocked Keys in your hand Into me see All that I am Into my hope Into my dread Pastures have roamed Fields where I bled My guard is down My trust complete Enter my heart Into me see I love how the word intimacy sounds like into me see There's a voice that's uh, been speaking deeply into my life the past few years. Her name is Cynthia Bourgeau. She's part of Richard Rohr's Center for Action and Contemplation. I love this quote about intimacy from Cynthia. It says, A wisdom way of knowing requires the whole of one's being and is ultimately attained only through the yielding of one's whole being into the intimacy of knowing and being known. It doesn't happen apart from complete vulnerability and self-giving. But the divine lover is absolutely real. And for those willing to bear the wounds of intimacy, the knowledge of that underlying coherence, quote, in which all things hold together is both possible 
and inevitable. That's Cynthia Borgio. Into my hope, into my dread, pastures I've roamed, fields where I've bled. My guard is down, my trust complete. Enter my heart, into me see. Well, I'm with Mallory Polk, and I'm so excited to be with you because this is a great opportunity for our greater congregation of Sparrow Day to get to know you because you are our Little Sparrows director. So a lot of our families know you really well, but this is a great opportunity for our greater congregation to get to know you. So I just wanted to ask you this whole concept of what a big value here for Sparrow Day is emotional safety, that you can show up as you are and you don't have to pretend. And you have been part of two groups, we've called them story groups, where it's really about telling your story. You've been part of one with me and then you've led one. I'd just love to hear what has that been like for you? Initially, what first comes to my mind is healing. And uh, the first podcast group that I lead is, talks about our stories and specifically our origin stories and what that means and what that looks like. And um, so we're listening to this podcast and I'm learning so much about how stories, um, how our story and, and moments of traumatic experiences can influence our brain and how our bodies can hold on to that. And then the I'm learning so much just mentally and then I'm experiencing it, experiencing it in our group in which I'm actually practicing writing one of my stories, a moment in my life that has been hurtful and I've, you know, have been damaged. Mm -hmm. um, and then reading it aloud to a group of women that, you know, some look like me and some don't look like me, but just are Reading it out loud just offers a lot of healing mm -hmm. for me. Um, so yeah, I don't. Yeah, I love that. What's it been like for you also to sit amongst other people and hear their stories? Well, honestly, it makes me feel like I'm a part of a greater community. Um, these these women, I can see myself in each one of their stories. And they validate me because they're saying that they can see themselves in my story. And it makes me feel like I'm not alone. It makes me feel like I'm safe. And um, I've really lived a life of just holding in a lot of my shame, a lot of my story inside myself. And um, just letting a little bit out has just released the power of that shame wow. over my life. Yeah, could you tell me more about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, we went through two series of story work in which we wrote down our story and shared it, shared it out loud. Um, the first story that I read, I was in emotional overwhelm a group, in a group of women. I was trembling and I got upset and was crying. And, um, you know, that's, it's very vulnerable for me to, mm -hmm. to be in a space like that and experience that, but I was really just safely held mm -hmm. and um, honestly very validated in my story. And so the second time that we went through our stories, so I read it the first time and had emotional overwhelm, and the second time I didn't get as much as overwhelmed as I initially did. And mm -hmm. what I could say to that is, I think I was healing. I think I healed portions of my brain that I wasn't even aware of by just being emotionally held within a group mm -hmm. and safe. Yeah. So one of the things that we really value at Sparrow Day is that you can just show up and come as you are. And a lot of churches will promote that you know, whether it's saying all are welcome, but we really mean it. You do not have to come into a group and have your act together, be all cleaned up, have the right answer. 
And so what's that been like for you as, as a member of our church, but also as a staff member? I think what it does is it, it offers me a lot of grace. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it, I think it offers true healing that I can just come as I am. And um, I'm, we're all human, you know, we all make mistakes and, and to come into a space where I, I'm not judged for my mistakes and that I can be safely held um, and that I'm not feeling like I'm being fixed or, mm -hmm. you know, unlisted advice. I mean, I just feel like I am creating and establishing real true friendships and relationships probably for the first time wow. um, in my life. You know, authentic connections where we're just really um, deepening connections. Mm. Wow. Well, we are so glad to have you, not only just as a member of Sparrow Day, but definitely as the director of our Little Sparrows. You do such an amazing job. And so thanks for being part of this conversation. It is my honor. Thanks. Well, now I get to talk to India Lacerda, who is the director of our children's ministry, Sparrow Day Kids. So this is pretty fun that we're getting to hear from our staff. And India, we're kind of talking about this idea of emotional safety. You know, our tagline for the church is where your story finds a home. And so what we mean in that is that each person gets to fully show up with who they are. And there is enormous amounts of acceptance, all acceptance. You don't have to get spiffed up, shined up, look all great before you show up. So I'd love to hear if you have maybe a story of not being able to experience that and then maybe even what it's been like for you now here at Sparrow Day. Right. Well, it is hard because I do think when we talk about emotional safety, the only reason we kind of know what that feels like is when we're in environments where it feels very different. And so I think this has shown up for me in the past when I would be in a group of people and friends and family members who felt safe to me and I thought we had a sense of community. And then when some of these harder conversations come up around scripture or opinion or emotion or people groups, and then there's kind of an unspoken feeling that comes up, like a sense of stirring the pot or saying something and the tone shifts in the room. And so I think in the past, I felt like something has changed here. There's some level of relational safety that's shifted and I'm no longer seen the same way or I'm not being received in the same way. And it's hard to articulate, but it's, I think it's this emotional, intuitive sense that we have that something's going wrong. There are red alarms going off in the room mm -hmm. that I'm not hearing, but I can tell are going off. So, And what's that been like for you? Yeah, it's very, it's sad that there's a lot of grief in that for me, because most of the time in my life, these have shown up with people that I really genuinely love and care about. And mm -hmm. it's shown up in church communities that I grew up in as a child where all the kids knew each other and all the, the families were friends with one another and there was always kind of this innocent sense of safety that I assumed was there. And then as I grew older and started to have my own wisdom and intuition and my own emotions that I think are an incredible guide in terms of wisdom, that I started to realize, oh, something is going wrong here. I'm playing the role that I was not supposed to be playing, mm -hmm. you know, in showing up and having my own perspective on things. Yeah. And, and what's it like for you now, at least in our, this community at Sparrow Day? Oh, wonderful. I don't know that I could be a part of a church community otherwise at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a testament of the power of Sparrow Day and of healing in relational environments because it has been so liberating to not only be able to show up in a church for who I am, but to be able to show up as a staff member, as a woman with a voice. Mm -hmm. And my intuition and my perspective is welcomed and accepted and encouraged and affirmed. And so this has been a completely different experience for me. Yeah. Mm. Well, India, how, how have these things impacted you as far as the director of Sparrow Day Kids? Well, just personally, it's been so incredibly healing to go back to the simple environment of being with children because children are so able to trust their gut instincts and so ready to show up for who they are. And so it's just been healing in my personal story to feel the safety of getting to be with children and to revisit some of these Bible stories and topics and conversations through an empathetic lens. 
And then it's also just been an incredible building an environment where children feel like they have that emotional safety to show up as they are and know that they are entirely loved for the person that God made them to be. And it's really important to me that we're creating an environment that teaches kids to honor their inner child and their inner voices and to listen to those moments where something doesn't quite sit right with them and to have the freedom to voice that and express their perspective and feel like they are welcomed for who they are in the same way that we're trying to build that environment with adults. I love that. And one of the things that I love always saying to our church congregation is the exact same thing that we're talking about as an adult in the adult congregation. It, you're talking about with our children and it matches and you do create and bring safety for our children to ask any question they want to, to say anything they want to, that they're not going to be judged or criticized. So, so grateful for you. Thank you. Well, I'm now here with Micah White and along with his family, Dawn and Aurora and Simeon, they are part of Sparrow Day and we've been so glad to have you guys. And I just want to hear a little bit about, you know, our tagline here is where your story finds a home. And I know that's really meaningful to you. Story is really meaningful to you. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you. That, I love the topic. And, um, you know, we, we get to be part of a, a really great city group. Um, and um, it, it's interesting because it, our city group just started earlier this year. And um, I feel like we were really kind of building um, to kind of have a safe space um, mm -hmm. that people can show up and tell their stories. And honestly, you know, when the pandemic and everything hit, um, it was difficult to figure out how to switch to this mm -hmm. kind of online virtual environment. And I think, you know, that's that's something that we're still really tackling is, is, is how to do that. And mm -hmm. it seems like things change so fast, um, trying to get Get a, get a place where we can continue to build that space. But I do think that creating space and a, a safe space that people can show up and give their stories is really important because I think we all have the need for building kind of a, a coherent narrative um, for our own experiences, uh, but also for our world. And I think that when we start telling our stories um, sometimes we even hear ourselves putting things into a space that maybe we didn't even connect those pieces before. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's part of the beauty in being able to tell our stories is we start to bring some of these pieces together mm -hmm. and even hear our own stories uh, in a way that maybe we didn't think of them that way before. But when we tell them, they kind of come together for us. And mm -hmm. I think the other side of that is the idea of listening and I, I do think that right now in this moment the listening piece is really important and it we can learn so much from each other's experiences and and how we've seen the world and experienced the world and you know I was, I was thinking about um, Brene Brown how she talks about um, that we can't always identify with people's experiences because we haven't experienced it the way that they have but that we can empathize with how it affects them and it's something that we all know what it's like to be uh, to be loved to be hurt by those we love to feel marginalized to suffer and I think being able to empathize with those experiences really brings us together and it kind of I feel like it broadens our perspective and it allows us to kind of take more in um, from the world as we see it and we experience it um, by being able to hear each other's stories. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I think that for me, that's part of what, what makes it special to be able to come to a place and know that I can tell my story and also I get to hear other people's stories. Mm. That is so lovely. And I'm so glad you highlighted that listening piece because that, that is a big part of it, right? It's not just us, the telling of our story. It's being in a place that can hold us and actually hear us without judgment. And, and I love that you highlighted that even at times when we're telling our story, there is almost a making sense of that. Yeah. So that's lovely. Would you want to share anything else about that? What's it been like just even for you? Well, I, I can honestly say that even in the last few weeks, um, 
hearing stories through the interview process and uh, what you guys have been doing for the services. I love it because each person's experience is unique to them, mm -hmm. but it also has something that resonates for me. And it, I feel like that I'm learning to see things more openly, more broadly, um, by hearing other people's experiences. And so I really like it, and I, I think of even services back when we were still together, where interview and question and answer took a central part of the message. And I feel like that's a great opportunity for us to grow. Uh, and, you know, I can't think of a better reason to come together as a church than to share our stories with each other and to learn from each other. Mm. Thank you, Micah. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for sharing that part of you, your yeah. story with us this morning. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us for this conversation about emotional safety. And I'm so grateful for Mallory and India and Micah. They're just a great, wonderful part of our body here at Sparrow Day. And you know, here at Sparrow Day, what we value is our highest value. Our first value is all about Christ-like love. And we feel like that's enough. Our fourth value that we have is we really value relationships and being attuned to God, to self, and to others. And so I've been part, as I mentioned at the top of this service, I've been part of other churches and ministries where relationships are important and change is important, but often that comes as a result of sometimes fear and shame, kind of keeping us in line. And, and here at Sparrow Day, we value emotional safety because we believe that in order to feel safe, in order to change, you have to feel safe. Because once you have set up faith as a standard that has to be reached, a standard that can feel either or black and white, it can feel like a transaction more than transformation. And once that is set up here at Sparrow Day, we think that emotional safety goes out the window. But when a person can come in and be seen and be known and be fully accepted, change happens. Love changes us and acceptance changes us. And so here at Sparrow Day, that's what we're about. So glad you joined us for this conversation. We're gonna have Nicole coming up next. So I just really want you to create a space for that, for her and what she's gonna bring us. But I also wanna introduce you to a new family member. Uh, David and I have thought about and prayed about this opportunity for a while. And so we want to introduce you to our newest family member. Hold, I'll be right back. This is Nestle, and she is our 10 week old newest family member. And we just wanted you to meet her and we love her already. See ya, enjoy Nicole. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the night and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God you 
Well, that's our service today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Travis Spall, and I'm the Director of Operations here at Spare Day Church. And you know, emotional safety is one of the things that I think makes Spare Day so special. Whether you're in one of our classes, our groups, or even as a staff team, whatever you bring to the table or have to say is always met with safety, love, and care. And so I'm so proud to be a part of a church that holds emotional safety at such a high value. Well, you've probably seen that we've been announcing in a July 11th event here right next door to the church where we were planning to get together uh, and have a picnic and watch a movie. Well, due to the most recent guidelines by Davidson County for our phase two, uh, we have decided to no longer have that event. You know, as a church, we think it's very important that we take care of our people and we uh, also take care of Nashville. And a part of that is paying attention to the science and the data of all this COVID 19 stuff. So we think that it'd be the best practice for the church to not hold this event and make sure that we're doing our part to keep our city safe. Uh, but at this time, we are still planning on having our first service on August 16th in the brand new building. The building is really shaping up. We're seeing all these different phases happen uh, and it's beautiful and we cannot wait to show you. Um, but having said that, we will continue to watch the practices as we get closer to that date and let all of you know. So continue to watch our social media and our website for updates on our August 16th launch date. Well, lastly, for those who have continued to give throughout this time, we just want to say thank you. It means so much to us that in this uh, time of so many unknowns that you've continued to partner with our church. So thank you. 
And if you've not yet given and you'd like to, it's really easy to sign up. You can go to sparaday.com, you click the Give Here link, and you can sign up to either be a one-time giver or also one of our recurring givers. It's really easy, safe, and secure. Um, but again, we thank you for giving and being a part of Spare a Day. Well, everyone, we thank you again for joining us for this week, and we'll see you next week.